It means that we now understand much more about our universe than we ever would have known had it not been for Hubble. It just gives me that sense that we live in this vast and remarkable universe. Hubble today would be a piece of floating space debris if it weren't for the human spaceflight program. To build a telescope, in many ways, is a decision to build a time machine. The United States Congress approved a large space telescope in 1977 sparking work to begin on creating this large, complex, and capable orbiting telescope. Well, it wasn't easy. Uh, it, it was a long slog, uh, difficult um, politically at first to, to have it accepted and funded in the U.S. Congress, and, and then uh, technically it was difficult. It's an amazing machine. It can uh, orbit around the Earth at 17,500 miles an hour. Uh, and the reason it can take all these, these great images is not only because it's above the atmosphere, but because it can very steadily hold its gaze on uh, an object in space. A globally connected telescope built through a partnership with the European Space Agency, which would look into the stars well beyond international borders. It takes a lot of people. Uh, you know, it takes people that, uh, obviously, the scientists to conceive of it, it takes the engineers to design it and build it and test it. It takes technicians to actually build it. It takes the people to keep the rooms clean, the facilities up and operating. So it takes people from every walk of life in, in order to do it, every skill set that you can think of. To then place this telescope into orbit to send back to us the data that scientists needed, unobstructed and unencumbered. And when it was launched in 1990, it really opened a new vista on the whole universe simply by enabling us to get sharper images above the atmosphere. At the time, I was the what we call the PLT, or the pilot, for the Hubble deploy mission, which was STS-31 aboard the shuttle Discovery. All of us in the crew had a, a certain feeling of exhilaration and excitement. We knew that this was going to be an important mission. Two, one, and liftoff of the Space Shuttle Discovery with the Hubble Space Telescope, our window on the universe. On the 25th of April, 1990, the Space Shuttle Discovery deployed the Hubble Space Telescope into an orbit around Earth. Discovery Houston, you have a go to open the doors. Uh, Roger, Houston. The mission itself was pretty intense because we we had to train for any number of contingencies that we all prayed would not happen. Uh, ironically, one of those contingencies was failure of the solar array to deploy. It took us much of the day for the flight control team to say, look, we, this is not working out. We don't think we're going to get the solar arrays deployed. Side of the path, the other half. All of a sudden, this great experience turned out to, to just go, this is not good. <laughs> supervisor, Pete. When the ground control team calls it, stop, stop. We think we found a solution, um, you know, just stop where you are, we're going to try this. And, and they did, and it worked, and so we went ahead and deployed. Boy, activity so far is going very smoothly. Okay, they got the story, and we're uh, in. It all worked out because of the incredible work of the combination of the crew on board, the flight control team in Houston, but most especially um, very smart people at the Goddard Space Flight Center uh, who actually knew the Hubble Space Telescope about as well as any people around. Discovery, go for Hubble release. Yes, the Discovery. Go ahead, Charlie. Okay, story, uh, we've been taking marks. Um, residuals and ratios look good, and we'd like to go ahead and uh, go to filter stake. We concur, Charlie. The science that is astronomy would never be the same. When people think about a telescope here on Earth, they think about a mirror with a tube around it. And that's exactly what Hubble is. It's a, it's a huge mirror with a huge tube around it in space. Of course, the purpose of Hubble is to take these beautiful images that we learn about and then the data is sent back to Earth for us to study. The Hubble Space Telescope powered up, all systems nominal, and the data began to stream in. Images of far off distances, galaxies and stars, but there was something wrong. The Magnificent Space Observatory's imagery was not clear, not crisp. We saw the first light images, and to the amateur, like me, it looked great because we had made this great discovery right off the bat. What we thought was a single star turned out to be a binary star. When we learned that, no, it's not really that good an image, it's, it's kind of blurred because we have this theme. From an agency perspective and from a public perspective, 
in a, in a congressional perspective, it was doom and gloom. But working on a bipartisan basis, we used the best tools uh, to identify, was this a techno-turkey that we would just bag uh, as a terrible mistake and say bye-bye boondoggle, or were we really going to try to fix it? All we had was sincere collaboration. The mirror was polished incorrectly. We were off by half the thickness of a human hair from center to edge. And that, that's pretty astounding uh, that, that you know, we could uh, come so close and yet not make it. The truly remarkable feature of the Hubble Space Telescope is that it was designed to be upgraded and fixed. And NASA is absolutely expertise on this. When you gotta get the job done, the team comes from many different places. One, two, zero. And we have liftoff. Liftoff of the Space Shuttle Endeavor on an ambitious mission to service the Hubble Space Telescope. The real magic on the Hubble mission is almost 40 hours of spacewalking and we had almost no surprises. Because astronauts from NASA have been able to go back and refurbish it, put in new instruments, repair it. And so that 25 years has made it an increasingly more powerful telescope. And it's the fact that Hubble is so powerful today, which is so remarkable after 25 years. It's basically 10 to 100 times more powerful than when it was first launched. I did a mission to the uh, Hubble Space Telescope, and it, was a, it, wasn't, it wasn't really a refurbishment. It was a rescue mission because the Hubble Telescope uses um, gyroscopes to determine how it's moving and how to point with absolutely no motion at a star. And those gyroscopes uh, were failing. And then by the time we got there, only one, I think, was working. And so it was a dead telescope at that point. Our role on that mission was to basically repair the Hubble telescope. It was a repair, a real repair mission, just like the first repair mission to change the optics. If I had messed that up, I would be the one that had broken the telescope forever. <laughs> I guess that's part of the excitement of having worked a Hubble mission, because you know you've got the best, best team on the ground, best crew upstairs. It's exciting, but there's, there's a level of confidence you're going to pull through this. We were able to leave the Hubble in even better shape, such that now we're able to celebrate the 25th anniversary. With the repairs completed, Hubble blew the world away with what it saw. Circling the globe at five miles per second, this school bus sized observatory was the most technologically advanced device ever launched and has stayed amazingly advanced through five repair and upgrade missions. From the first mission critical optics repair on space shuttle mission STS-61, to the last servicing mission, STS-125, which added the wide field camera three and replaced or improved sensors, batteries, and numerous other components. The magnitude of the things that they wanted to accomplish almost meant certain failure somewhere. But the crew said, look, we can do this. You know, we will have accomplished so much more in making Hubble better than it is ever, ever believed to be. Everybody knows Hubble. It's, it's really true. Worldwide, all throughout the U.S., everybody, all ages, all walks of life, you say Hubble Space Telescope, people know what you're talking about. More than a simple telescope, Hubble is humanity's grand observatory of the vastness of space. And we've kept exploring by staring into the universe and moving forward. The great thing about Hubble now this year is that it's still going strong and we expect it to last out till 2020, maybe even longer. Hubble has consistently taken us to places we've never been, visually of course, and uh, given uh, and uh, empowered us to answer questions that in a previous generation of telescopes we couldn't even pose. And that allowed us to probe much deeper in the universe and to see phenomena that were otherwise hidden from us. And it revealed a scientific wonderland of discoveries, but even more so, it showed us for the first time how beautiful the universe is, because the Hubble Space Telescope was able to observe the cosmos with the kind of intricate detail that we observe with our human eyeballs. It means that we now understand much more about our universe than we ever would have known had it not been for Hubble. Uh, that we have not only young people, students, but now professionals who have grown up with Hubble and who have had Hubble change their lives and change their minds about, about careers because they saw a Hubble image and decided that, you know, I don't really think I like science, but I think I want to try it because I want to go take part in, in doing something with this particular instrument that makes these incredible visual images for people. So I, I think it has changed not just textbooks, but people's lives. 
we're on a never-ending journey, and the Hubble Space Telescope celebrates its quarter century of exploration as part of that journey.